good morning to everybody welcome to tsat nipuna commissioner of college of education telangana hyderabad today we are here to present a topic in zoology on animal behavior here i am shrimati g n radhika assistant professor of zoology from government degree college patancheru and micro pres presenter dr n rajkumar garu assistant professor of zoology from government degree college hyatnagar rangareddy district so today our presentation is covering some aspects of uh, animal behavior which is basically the bsc first year syllabus the first second semester of the first year syllabus under the cbcs stream of telangana state so it is an emerging science behavioral science is an emerging science on which we would like to throw some light this particular topic earlier was uh, basically in the post graduation syllabus in the universities but now it has been introduced to the ug student ug students it's uh, really wonderful to have this particular topic and uh, sir let us introduce uh, the particular topic animal behavior telugu lo dinni jantu pravartana ani antaru జంతు ప్రవర్తనకి సంబంధించి చాలా విషయాలు మనకు తెలిసినవి కానీ ఒక క్రమ పద్ధతిలో తెలుసుకోవడం అనేది ఇవాళ మనము చేయబోయే ఈ యొక్క ప్రజెంటేషన్ సో ఇనిషియలీ యానిమల్ బిహేవియర్ జంతు ప్రవర్తనని మనము తెలుగులో వీ కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ యానిమల్ బిహేవియర్ ప్రవర్తన ఇందులో మనము ముఖ్యంగా చెప్పుకోవాల్సిన అంశాలు ఏవైతే ఉన్నాయో అవి ప్రవర్తనలో రకాలు అనుచలనాలు ప్రతీకార చర్యలు మరియు అనువర్తనం ఈ నాలుగు అంశాలు సార్ గుడ్ యూ ఇంట్రొడ్యూస్ వాట్ ఈస్ అన్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ టు బిహేవియర్ యా యాజ్ ఐ ఎస్ సెడ్ యానిమల్ బిహేవియర్ కెన్ బీ డెల్ట్ అండర్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ హెడ్డింగ్స్ డెఫినేషన్ ఆఫ్ బిహేవియర్ అండ్ డెఫినేషన్ అండ్ ఆరిజిన్ ఆఫ్ ద టర్మ్ ఎథాలజీ and the pioneers in the field of animal behavior and uh, we are also going to discuss about the types of behavior which includes innate behavior acquired behavior instinct behavior and motivated behavior sir what is mamulga swabhavika for innate uh, arjita acquired mm. sahajata instinctive and prerepita అని మనం పేర్కొంటూ ఉంటాము అండ్ ఇన్ ద సబ్సిక్వెంట్ స్టేజ్ విల్ డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ది డెఫినేషన్ ఆఫ్ ట్యాక్సెస్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వేరియస్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ట్యాక్సెస్ సో ద ట్యాక్సెస్ హ్యావ్ బిన్ క్లాసిఫైడ్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ డిఫరెంట్ క్రైటీరియా అకార్డింగ్ టు వన్ క్రైటీరియా దట్ ఈస్ ది రెస్పాన్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఆర్గనిజం టువర్డ్స్ ద స్టిమ్లస్ ఆర్ అవే ఫ్రమ్ ద స్టిమ్లస్ దే ఆర్ క్లాసిఫైడ్ ఇన్ టు టూ టైప్స్ సిమిలర్లీ based on the type of stimulus we have the common types about 10 and uh, based on the another criteria that is type of sense organs and movement of the organisms we have six types and uh, uh, next uh, we are also we are also going to discuss about the types of taxes at the taxes ni manam anuchalanalu ani kuda antam sir ee oka anuchalanalu kuda malli ee jeevula yokka ప్రతిస్పందనను బట్టి అవి ప్రేరణకి ఏ విధంగా ప్రతిస్పందిస్తున్నాయి దాన్ని బట్టి మళ్ళీ ఋణాత్మక మరియు ధనాత్మక ట్యాక్సెస్లు అనేవి రెండు రకాలు ఉంటాయి వీ కాల్ దెమ్ యాజ్ పాజిటివ్ ట్యాక్సెస్ అండ్ నెగటివ్ ట్యాక్సెస్ అండ్ కమింగ్ టు ద టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ట్యాక్సెస్ వీ హ్యావ్ సెవరల్ టైప్స్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ ద టైప్ ఆఫ్ స్టిమ్యులస్ ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈజ్ ఫోటో ట్యాక్సెస్ సిమిలర్లీ కెమో ట్యాక్సెస్ thermotaxis thigmotaxis gravitaxis galvanotaxis rheotaxis phonotaxis anemotaxis hydrotaxis huh. based on similars yeah and uh, based on the third criteria that is type of sense organs and the movement of organisms we have about six types namely clinotaxis tropotaxis telotaxis menotaxis nemotaxis mm. and magneto అయితే ఇది జ్ఞానాంగాల ఆధారంగా యొక్క వర్గీకరణ ఇది ఇంకొక రకం దీంట్లో మనం ఏం చెప్పుకుంటున్నామంటే ఈ 
కేంద్రీ కృతమయ్యే నాడీ వ్యవస్థ ఏదైతే దాన్ని కంట్రోల్ చేస్తుందో దాన్ని బట్టి we have again reflex action spinal action then based upon the number of synapses nadi kana sandula sankhyanu batti malli ivi rendu rakalu these we call them as the monosynaptic and the polysynaptic reflexes yes uh, similarly uh, we have uh, uh, another type of classification which includes uh, uh, phasic reflex and uh, tonic reflex depending upon the level, the level of, of stimulus. stimulus that is if the level of stimulus changes it refers to phasic reflex and if the level of stimulus remains same it is called as tonic reflex uh, similarly we have two more types of reflexes called as unconditioned reflex and conditioned reflex based upon the nature of stimulus whether it is familiar or not if it is familiar we call it as conditioned reflex and if it is unfamiliar we refer it to as uh unconditioned reflex okay sir aithe ee oka tropisms ane oka amshamu idi kuda malli ekkuga manamu mokkala sambandhinchina kadalikala gurinchi maatladinappudu deentlo malli konni rakalu phototropism chemotropism thermotropism thigmotropism gravitropism galvanotropism hydrotropism trametotropism inni rakalu ga manam tropism lo rakalu perkontamu now let us uh, switch our attention to, to behavior the introduction part of the behavior so to start with let us first understand the term behavior according to dictionary it it ref, it's uh, describes as acting or functioning in a specified or usual way, way. Uh, <clears throat> in another sense we can define the term behavior as it is a response or reaction of an organism to stimulus sir it is చాలా బ్రీఫ్ గా చెప్పాలంటే ఇట్ ఈస్ నథింగ్ బట్ ఒక ప్రేరణకి జీవి యొక్క స్పందన రీతి ఏ విధంగా ఉంటుంది దాన్ని మనము ప్రవర్తన అని పేర్కొంటాము సో బిహేవియర్ ఈస్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఎన్ ఇంటర్నలీ డైరెక్టెడ్ సిస్టమ్ ఆఫ్ అడాప్టివ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ దట్ ఫెసిలిటేట్ సర్వైవల్ అండ్ రిప్రొడక్షన్ అయితే ఇది సిగ్నిఫికెన్స్ సార్ వాట్ ఈస్ హౌ ఈస్ బిహేవియర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టు యానిమల్స్ ఆర్ why should a particular behavior aspect be like this because mm -hmm. that helps the animals to survive mm -hmm. and also for the reproduction this is utmost necessary yeah so if you look at the examples of behavior we can say growth behavior exhibited by plants when light strikes the yeah. leaf surface yes. uh, similarly we have another example that is nest building behavior by male stickleback fish so this is a very uh, interesting animal if you really look at the stickleback fish ee stickleback chepa anedi idi nadula yokka adugu bhagamlo koncha neelu takkuna prantamlo maga chepa idi goodu gartundi meer akkada chusinattaithe adi maga chepa goodu gartundi oka naalakaramlo unde goodu ee yokka goodu naachu mokkalu gaddi atlanti padarthalu anni jamma cheskoni adi oka naalakaramlo unna goodu ni gattukoni ee yokka purusha jeevi ledha maga stickleback chepa ఆ గూడు చుట్టూ రకరకాల విన్యాసాలు చేస్తూ ఆడజీవిని ఆకర్షిస్తుంది ఈ ఆడచేప ఈ స్టికిల్ బ్యాక్ చేప యొక్క ఉదర భాగం ఎరుపు రంగులోకి మారిపోతుంది ప్రత్యుత్పత్తి కాలంలో దానికి ఈ యొక్క స్త్రీజీవి ఆకర్షింపబడి ఇది ఆ గూడులోకి వచ్చి నెమ్మదిగా ఆ గూడులో గుడ్లు పెడుతుంది గుడ్లు పెట్టిన తర్వాత పురుష జీవి వెంటనే ఆ గుడ్ల పైన దాని యొక్క శుక్రకణాలు విడుదల చేసి వాటి ఫలదీకరణ కొనసాగి ఆ యొక్క పొదిగి పిల్లలు బయటికి వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఈ యొక్క పిండాల యొక్క సంరక్షణ పూర్తిగా మగ స్టికిల్ బ్యాక్ స్టికిల్ బ్యాక్ చేప తీసుకుంటుంది ఇది ఆ గూడు చుట్టూ తిరుగుతూ ఆ యొక్క పొదిగిన పిల్లలు కొంచెం పెరిగే అంత వరకు వాటిని సంరక్షించుకొని అది వాటిని కాపాడుకొస్తుంది చూడండి ఇది హియర్ దిస్ షోస్ ఎ వెరీ గుడ్ డిగ్రీ ఆఫ్ పేరెంటల్ బిహేవియర్ అండ్ ఆల్సో హౌ స్పెసిఫికలీ ద మేల్ కన్స్ట్రక్ట్స్ ద నెస్ట్ ఫార్ ద reading of the young ones yes. now let us uh, understand the uh, branch of science which, which is uh, called ethology uh, which deals with the study of animal behavior which is referred to as ethology the term ethology is derived from a greek word ethos which means habit convention or character pravartana gurinchi vivarimpu shastrani manam ethology anantamu ee oka ethology ane padanni motta modala pravesha pettina shastravetta ఇసిడోర్ జెఫ్రీ సెయింట్ హిలియర్ అని 
పంతొమ్మిదవ శతాబ్దంలో మనకు ఈ యొక్క ఇథాలజీ అనే పదాన్ని మొట్టమొదలు మనకి అందించడం జరిగింది అంతేకాకుండా దీని యొక్క ఆధునిక నిర్వచనము ఈ యొక్క పదానికి మనకు అమెరికాకి చెందిన జంతు శాస్త్రవేత్త వీలర్ అనే శాస్త్రవేత్త పంతొమ్మిది వందల రెండులో మనకు అందించడం జరిగింది యా అండ్ వీ కెన్ రిగార్డ్ అనదర్ సైంటిస్ట్ నికో టిన్ బర్చన్ యాజ్ ది ఫౌండర్ ఆఫ్ యానిమల్ బిహేవియర్ హీ ఈస్ ద వన్ హూ యాక్చువల్లీ యూజ్ ద టర్మ్ ఇథాలజీ ఇన్ ద రైట్ పర్స్పెక్టివ్ ఆర్ కరెక్ట్ పర్స్పెక్టివ్ ఇన్ ది ఇయర్ నైన్టీన్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఎస్ సో వీ కెన్ సీ ద ఇమేజ్ ఆఫ్ నికో టిన్ బర్చన్ సో ఆల్ దీస్ త్రీ మెంబర్స్ ఆర్ ద పైనిట్స్ హూ హ్యావ్ మేడ్ ద యానిమల్ బిహేవియర్ యాజ్ ఎ ఎమర్జింగ్ ఇండిపెండెంట్ డిసిప్లిన్ ఆఫ్ ది బయాలజీ ఓకే సార్ సో కమ్ కమింగ్ టు ద టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ బిహేవియర్ ప్రవర్తనలో రకాలు మనం చూసినట్టయితే వీ హ్యావ్ హెరిటబుల్ ఇంట్రెన్సిక్ స్టీరియో టైపిక్ ఆఫ్ విచ్ హెరిటబుల్ అంటే అనువంశకత పొందేవి వేర్ ద బిహేవియర్స్ ఆర్ ఎన్కోడెడ్ ఇన్ ద డిఎన్ఏ అండ్ పాస్డ్ ఆన్ ఫ్రమ్ వన్ జనరేషన్ టు అదర్ జనరేషన్ ఇక్కడ ఏంటి అంటే అనువంశికత పర్యంగా ఈ యొక్క ప్రవర్తన ఒక తల్లిదండ్రుల నుండి వాటి వాటి యొక్క సంతానానికి సంక్రమింపచేయడం అదే రకంగా ఒకవేళ ఇన్ ఇంట్రెన్సిక్ వీ హ్యావ్ దిస్ ఇస్ ప్రెసెంట్ ఇన్ యానిమల్స్ రేజ్డ్ ఇన్ ఐసోలేషన్ అయితే ఈ జీవులను వివిక్తత అంటే వేరుగా చేసి పెంచినప్పటికీ ఈ యొక్క స్వాభావిక ప్రవర్తనలో మార్పు రాదు మరొక రకం స్టీరియో టైప్ స్టీరియో టైప్ అంటే సేమ్ నో చేంజ్ సో పర్ఫార్మ్ ఇన్ ద సేమ్ వే ఈచ్ టైమ్ బై ఈచ్ ఇండివిజువల్ అంటే ఒక జీవి దాని యొక్క జీవిత కాలంలో ఒక ప్రేరణకి ఒకటే రకమైన సేమ్ రకమైన స్పందన దాని జీవిత కాలం అంతా చూపడం దీన్ని మనం స్టీరియో టైప్ లేదా సేమ్ అని పేర్కొంటూ ఉంటాం uh similarly the innate behavior is uh, uh can be described as inflexible that is it cannot be changed or modified either by learning or experience yeah that's true and uh, similarly the uh, innate behavior is described as consummate mm. that means the behavior even though it is performed for the first time it will be fully expressed and fully developed so here let me introduce a uh, one new term which is called ethogram that is nothing but a collection of behaviors uh, just like the physical tra- uh, traits like uh, color height weight etc physical characters uh, uh, they are passed on to the next generation even the collection of behaviors which are called as ethogram it is also passed to the uh, subsequent uh, generation okay aithe bhautika lakshanala yokka samuham tarvata santana taraniki andinchatam anedi ethogram lo manaki vivarana labis Uh, then uh, uh, coming to the innate behavior uh, this behavior is subject to genetic change because the behavior is uh, uh, hardwired that means it is encoded in the genes DNA. so it is subject to genetic change by various forces like mutation recombination during uh, uh, meiotic division and also natural సెలెక్షన్ అయితే పునఃసంయోజక డిఎన్ఏ ద్వారా కావచ్చు లేదా జన్యుపరమైన మార్పులు కావచ్చు ఉత్పరివర్తనాల వల్ల కావచ్చు లేదా ప్రకృతి ఎంపిక చేయడం వల్ల కావచ్చు ఈ యొక్క ప్రవర్తన ఏదైతే ఉందో మార్పులకి గురి అయ్యే అవకాశం ఉంటుంది సో దీస్ బిహేవియర్స్ ఆర్ నథింగ్ బట్ ఎవల్యూషనరీ అడాప్టేషన్స్ ఆర్ ఫైలోజెనటిక్ అడాప్టేషన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ లుక్ అట్ ద ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ది డాన్స్ ఎగ్జిబిటెడ్ బై ద హనీ బీస్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ యాస్ vagal dance or okay. dance language solar language solar yeah. dance correct it called. is also known as solar dance another uh, interesting example of innate behavior is the courtship ritual of dance fly okay sir so this is something related to uh, vagal dance vagal dance dani manamu vagal nrutyam anantamu ikkada tenatigala yokka oka sambhashana itara tenatigalaki avi teliyestunna entante సూర్యుడు ఒక ఆధారం వీటికి మకరందం లభించే పుష్పాలు కలిగి ఉన్న మొక్కలు ఆ యొక్క దిశను చూపడానికి వాటి యొక్క తేనెతెట్ట నుండి ఈ యొక్క తేనెతి తీగలు ఒక రకమైన నృత్యము దాన్ని మనం వ్యాగుల్ నృత్యము అని అంటాము దాని ద్వారా ఇవి వాటి యొక్క స్నేహితులకు ఏం తెలియజేస్తాయంటే ఫలానా మకరందం కలిగి ఉన్న పుష్పాల చెట్టు ఇంత దూరంలో ఉంది ఇంత సూర్యునికి ఈ దిశలో ఉంది అనే అంశాలు వివరించడానికి ఇది ఒక మంచి నృత్యం దిస్ ఈజ్ ఎ నైస్ వే ఆఫ్ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ టు ఇట్స్ కొలీగ్స్ ద డైరెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ 
nectar yeah. so availability. These honeybees are uh, communicating to their conspecifics, that means individuals of the same species about the location of the food, the direction and distance of okay, the food sir. by this behavior. So, coming to the next one sir, hmm. this is a dance fly, dance fly is mating. We can call it as a pravartana copulatory behavior where the male insect it gives a kind of prey to the female. And they are a jiviki, edo oka era vayatam. Eoka ada jivlo, there it seems they believe to be very aggressive. Mm. And just to control uh, these female insects before the copulation takes place, the male provides a particular prey to directly to the female animal yeah. or the prey is wrapped in a silk ball of silk. Ball and a patu pogulo chutti adiche sarki is three jivi eranu thine prayatnam lo in its attempt to eat the prey that has been supplied by its mate, yeah. it starts opening the silk ball. ball and in the process the time is sufficient for the male mm. to mate with the female. Yeah, so the silk ball or the prey that is uh, offered by the male yeah. dance fly is called as nuptial gift. Nuptial gift. Ah. Okay, then you manamo pelikanuka anikuda anoch. Yes, and uh, now we switch over to second type of behavior which is known as acquired or learned behavior. Arjita pravartana. Yes, mm. so learned behavior is one that an organism develops as a result of experience or True. training. Like ikada mature sir, cook kalu, mana metra train jeste abhi atla ne, kucha mande kuchinte, nila bar mande nila bar tai, budarlu mande dorlu tai. Cook kalu endu sir, pedda pedda sarkas lallu mana pululu, simhalu, enu gula ne, mana washam lok techko dan ke karna maintain ante, vati oka pravartana mana mo, mana kanukulanga vati ne march nanga bati. So ini, ande ka kunda cycle nechko ne tapuri, over cycle ekka gane cycle dalay do. Let the car eke gucho gane cycle dalay do. Ento practice, enno saar lo padi, lechi, debbal da kichko nang trata ne ochchindi. Inko vinta vichitra maina avisham sir, zebra finch ane oka pakshi, it sings a song. Yeah, so this bird called zebra finch, it learns how to sing by observing the male bird. Only the male bird sing. Initially, it will observe the father bird and also other male birds during its younger age and then it tries to sing by practice and as it attains the adulthood, it will develop a song of its own unique nature. So, that is the speciality of this zebra finch. Then we have some more acquired behavior where which are non-heritable, okay, some that can be acquired only through observation or experience. Like for example, P.T. Usha was a sprint queen, but necessarily her daughter or son mm. be the same. Mm. So it all is through practice mm. all, or it is through experience. Then we have an extrinsic where which is absent in animals raised in isolation from others. Mm. So animals in a group learn certain behavioral aspects mm. which would be void in the animals if they are raised in isolation. Mm. Then over a change of time, the permutable possibility of uh, behavior, the pattern or sequence may change over time. Mm. Uh, another uh, interesting characteristic feature of acquired or learned behavior is adaptability. That is, these organisms are capable of, these behaviors are capable of modification to suit the changing conditions. We need anukula nalu antam sir. This anukula nalu evaite unna yo. It is jeevi okka jeevi tham mergu padatani ki to improve or refine through practice so that it leaves, it leads a very comfortable and healthy life. For such kind of behavior also, we have a progressive type of a behavior. Yeah, so it is a progressing by improvement or refinement. Refinement. Yes. And in the acquired behavior, we have four types of behaviors which are known as habituation, imprinting, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Of these four, habituation and imprinting, they are simple types of learning behavior on one hand, whereas classical conditioning and operant conditioning, they are examples of complex types of learning behavior. And there is a lot of questions. At the end of the day, habituation. Habituation, this is a learning 
to ignore certain stimuli. And they couldn't pray and no particular down the And I occur prayer and a key. Elan to prayer and unimportant or irrelevant. Irrelevant or mali mali oche prati pravartana. For example, manamu, uh, if we see mm. here, what happens is mm. uh, next. Uh, here we have yeah. the cockroach, mm. the anal sarsai of cockroach, mm. and a yoka buddhinka yoka anal sarsai paina, gali udite, a puff of air. It will run away. But if you continuously keep doing that, what happens is it starts getting acquainted. That's why you have to do it. So the, the response decreases yes. and finally, eventually, it will stop responding. Respond. Such behavior we call it as habituation. habituation. Yeah. And imprinting is also something, sir. Edo to, for example, this we call it as this generally takes place in the early life, and the short time window, which is known as the critical period, a critical samayam lo, iyoka dani paina edaite oka impression badpo thundu that lifelong undu po thundu. For example, duckling imprinting on their mother. Mm. See, ido ka nice picture, sir. If you see here, the duck, you know, the ducklings are following the mother duck. Because immediately after they have hatched, they could see their mother initially. So they have been imprinted that this is their mother. They need to follow their mother. Kani, me ringko picture lo juste. That is Sir K. Lawrence. He the Nobel laureate in ethology. If you see here the mother bird, ante dani yoka tali pakshni jar jar pesi. Itanu ayoka baat pila lamundu the ducklings. He started walking in front of them, and these. Birds, they believe that this is the parent. Uh, Lawrence is his parent, is their parent, and slowly they started following Lawrence. Yeah. And so uh, in the se second image, yeah, uh, when the ducklings are uh, hatched, uh, so they encountered for the first time they have seen uh, uh, Mr. Lawrence, and uh, they thought he is the parent, and yeah. they are following they the followed him. Lawrence. So that is the first kind of an impression. Huh. We call that as an imprinting. Then we have uh, another kind, we call it as classical conditioning, in which the learning is to associate one stimulus with another unrelated stimulus. Yes. So Here if you see, you could you just uh, tell us something about honeybees? Yeah. So these honeybees, they try to associate uh, one stimulus with uh, another stimulus. For example, they try to associate uh, floral color, color of the flowers and also the smell, the fragrance of the flowers with the presence of nectar. So, if we look at one uh, uh, experiment where the bees, they can be trained to collect sugar water from colored dishes. So, in this experiment what they have done is, they have taken two dishes, yellow one dish. is blue dish, another is yellow dish. Okay. And they have uh, placed uh, pure water in the blue dish, whereas sugar water in, in the yellow dish. And uh, to their surprise, wa what they have observed, the honey bees they started associating yellow color with, with the food. Uh, sugar water okay. that is food water. Mm. That means if they see yellow color, they understand that it is the uh, uh, dish containing the food. And what they did is they have uh, changed the positions of the yes. dishes. Yes. Uh, when that was done, uh, still the bees were moving towards the yellow, yellow dish yellow bowl, because uh, it contains sugar solution. Sugar solution. And uh, interestingly, the scientist. Uh, what they have done is they have exchanged the contents of the uh, dishes, dish with yeah, the, blue dish. uh, uh, the uh, contents of yellow dish into blue dish and uh, vice versa. And what they found is, uh, even after swapping or exchanging the contents of the dish, uh, still the bees were attracted uh, 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 to the yellow dish. Yellow dish because they associated color with yeah. food. So in this this association behavior, we are calling it as conditioning. Sir, this is one excellent uh, classical conditioning example given by Ivan Pavlov. Here the dog, as soon as a hungry dog cites food, there is salivation. Not only Nilgar Pothante Kukaki. Ate Manam Inkoka Pakana, if we show the next one, Dinto Emotante, Idi Shabdam, Edo Okati, Oka Ganta Gutadam, Leda tuning fork ni strike jadam, a shabdaniki, kukaki era kamena not on the lala jalam bite ki dadam the dog is not drooling. But then, in the third experiment, the same dog we have subjected it to supply of food along with making of a sound by using a tuning fork or by a bell. Dini mm. wala, 
ప్రతిసారి భోజనం పెట్టినప్పుడల్లా కుక్కకి ఈ యొక్క శబ్దం సమ్ బెల్ సౌండ్ అనేది వినిపించినప్పుడు ఈ దిస్ డాగ్ gets a kind of conditioning it knows that if there's a sound it's an it's an association with food mm. then ultimately chappudu aaharam rendu kalayika valla daniki lalajalam anedi raavadam konasagindi it started drooling now ultimately what we do in the last step is food pakkana pettesi food bettakunda only ganta chappudike kukka ganta chappudu vinagane etla u aaharam nak pedtaru because that is associated with food mm. it starts drooling then you can note only lala jalam anedi baiti ki start so the secretion of saliva we call it as drooling drooling yeah. <coughs> uh, then uh, we have uh, another type of uh, acquired behavior known as operant conditioning this is also known as instrumental learning or trial and error learning we call it as instrumental learning because certain instruments are used in this particular experiment ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ కాక్రోచ్ ఓకే రన్నింగ్ త్రూ అ మేజ్ అంటే ఇప్పుడు ఆహారం వెతుక్కోవడానికి బొద్దింక ఇప్పుడు చిన్న పిల్లల్ని మనము న్యూస్ పేపర్ లో సండే పేపర్ లో ఒకటి వస్తుంది ఒక క్విజ్ ఏంటి అంటే ఇక్కడ నుండి కుందేలు లోపలికి వెళ్ళాలి ద రాబిట్ హాస్ అన్ ఎంట్రన్ ఫ్రమ్ వన్ సైడ్ ద ఫుడ్ ఎస్ ఎట్ దర్ ఎండ్ హౌ విల్ ఇట్ రీచ్ దట్ ఒక మేజ్ ఓకే ఆ పజిల్ లాగా అట్లా బొద్దింక నెమ్మదిగా ఇట్లాంటి పజిల్ లో నుండి ఇట్లాంటి మేజ్ లో నుండి కూడా ఇట్ విల్ నో ఇట్స్ వెయిట్ ద ఫుడ్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ పర్టికులర్ బిహేవియర్ ఆపరెంట్ కండిషనింగ్ Uh, there is what is called as reward and uh, punishment so if we look at the uh, experiment uh, one uh, to understand this trial and error behavior uh, a hungry dog when it was left in a room initially it exhibits a random movement and uh, then it uh, jumps on to the a particular table where it uh, uh, gets its food uh, yeah it uh, obtains the food so by repeating such uh, trials it learns to jump onto the table with the reward so same idi manamu uh, even man learning to walk mm-hmm. an infant learning to walk and to swim mm-hmm. neelallo padeyagane e manushi idadu mm-hmm. adi kaallu gottukovali cheetlu gottukovali chinna pillal nadche tappudu kuda enno saarlu kinda padi kinda paddanu gana ani maanakunda malli malli prayatnam cheyadam valla mm-hmm. nadavagaladu ade rakamga neelallo idagaladu mm-hmm. so this is the dog uh, the picture pictorial view uh the food is on the table initially it uh, finds it struggles to find its way to the food once it knows it knows that the food will be there on the table it will jump onto the table for yeah. its food so subsequently it will not uh, move around and it will straight away go to the table so and this is uh, bf skinner sir american mm-hmm. uh one experiment uh, by using a rat mm. we call it as a skinner box or a liver box mm. yeah so in this experiment performed by uh, skinner Uh, he used an instrument called skinner box or uh, liver box in this uh, the animal which they have studied is the uh, rat uh, uh, here there is a, a liver liver is nothing but a rod and uh, there is also uh, a food dispenser so as the rat moves inside the box and when it happens to touch upon the uh, liver or the rod then immediately a, a, a small amount of food is released, released. so that is so uh, how? so it learns mm. it learns that oh, whenever the rod is uh, touched the food will be uh, provided so that is how it uh, understands so it's a similar experiment by uh, thondike we call it as the thondike puzzle box mm. here edward l thondike an american he used the same strategy for a cat in a bone and the cat is hungry it is kept in a bone there is a particular liver in the bone by pressing which the cat can open the door mm. so initially the cat doesn't know it doesn't have enough knowledge about this particular liver a pilli ayokka gadilo tirugutu tirugutu anukokunda it will go and press on the liver once the liver is pressed the door automatically opens once the door opens the cat rushes out its food is kept ready there it has got a reward because it has performed the activity of opening the door all on its own mm. so next time when the cat is kept in a similar way and the food is awaiting it outside the cat knows immediately that it has to press the lever the door will open it has to can come out so this is all trial and error learning oka arjita pravartana avu nerchukuntayi ee rakamga ivi aaharanni pondadaniki oka prakriya yeah then uh, <coughs> uh, let us uh, look at uh, some more aspects of uh, instinctive behavior so instinctive behavior is present in the organism from birth so uh, instinctive behavior is uh, usually uh, used uh, 
interchangeably with the uh, innate behavior. So, this behavior is mostly uh, seen by those organisms where the nervous, uh, nervous system, system is, is not uh, that present. well developed. Yeah. For example, in, in plants plant and, and lower, animals. lower animals like mm. porif um, mm. protozoans and uh, porifers. Yeah. And then here we have uh, different uh, levels of uh, instinctive behavior. Yeah. At the uh, elementary level, we have reflexes, mm. and at uh, complex level, we have uh, uh, so nest behaviors building. like nest building by birds and also dam building, dam by, building beavers. by beavers. Beavers are actually aquatic are mammals. Aquatic mammals, rodents they belong to. So, yeah. if we see here the bird, uh, hmm. see uh, a bird, it is an instinct for it to build a nest during the reproductive period. Very beautiful nests are constructed by birds for their reproductive behavior. Hmm. Then we have the beavers. Hmm. Beavers, probably these were the animals who taught man how to construct a dam. Okay, they are constructing dams and uh, for the obstructing the passage of water and definitely for uh, its winter to pass by accumulating some fru food over there mm -hmm. by which it can survive the winter. Yeah, we have heard that uh, dams are usually constructed by engineers, but these animals interestingly they are they have been uh, doing it building all the their life. dams. The purpose uh, behind uh, constructing the dams is uh, they will avoid the predators and also they will ensure that they will have food security during winters uh, from the pond uh, system. Yeah. Then we have uh, very uh, extremely complex uh, um, behavioral patterns which include biological rhythms, territorial, behavioral, courtship, mating, etc. Then you know all these are social hierarchies in the social organizations. Then we also have large scale and composite activities which include parental care, migration in birds, migration in fishes, etc., which are all behavioral patterns. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, innate behavior ki, instinct behavior ki, there is a subtle difference. Subtle difference. In twente, innate behavior and the simple type of behaviors, whereas instinctive behaviors is a more complex they are very complicated, subtle they are large scale and uh, composite activities and these are the various examples. We have here one Instinctive behavior, Sahajata Pravartana Lo Bhaganga, Ikada Manayoka Jatiya Pakshi, the pride of India, a national bird, the copulation of the male and the female we can see here, Peacock. the beautiful plumage of the male bird during the copulation. Hmm. This is sir again hmm. a in infant sucking uh, milk from the feeder. Hmm. This is again an instinctive behavior. The moment any object touches the upper limb of the infant, the infant grabs it for food mm. and that is that is how the sucking reflects in infants. Mm. Yeah, And uh, uh, coming to the uh, fourth type of behavior known as motivated behavior, the ethologists they usually use a term called drive, for example, hunger drive or sex drive to describe the motivational force that is driving them to behave in that particular fashion. So, this motivation force they arise either on a person uh, within a person or on a person to initiate the motivated behavior. Again the stimuli can be internal or external for the motivated behavior. It can be motiv motivational, releaser or terminating whereby we have hunger as a motivational stimulus which encourages the animal to search for food. Akali oka prerana, jantulu aharam kosam vetakadamu, releaser the sight of food induces the full range of feeding behavior. Aharam labincha gaane, evi evi danga pravartis thai. Kadpu ninda gaane, inka saripo indi gaapati santrupti chendu thai. So, ikkada red dot on the beak of adult herring gull, mm -hmm. sir, yeah, here. Yeah, so I, it is an interesting uh, behavior pattern where we can see a, a red spot at the tip of the uh, beak uh, in case of a herring gull. So, the young ones when they see the red spot on the mother's uh, bill, they try to peck, peck at it. That is, akada podusthaya red spot ni porchada mala thalli pakshya ne di thana karupla na harani regurgitates and uh, provides to the young ones. Then we have taxes, another kind of vidhi manam anuchala naalu anantamu. Ikkada jantu yoka kadalika, because this is a basically seen in animals. So, here the animals are capable of movement because they have got locomotory organs, they we call them as motile animals. Then we have uh, in um, other 
the taxes are innate. Mm. Once again, they are innate. Yeah. We have two kinds of taxes. One mm. is positive taxes, negative taxes. Movement towards stimulus, we call it positive. Mm. Away from stimulus is negative. Movement of euglena towards light is positive. Movement of cockroaches away from the light is a negative taxes. Yeah. So, uh, earlier we have seen a, any type of taxes, it comes under two categories. If they are moving towards light, we call it as photo taxes as seen in case of euglena. And if they move away from the uh, light uh, stimulus, we call it as negative photo taxes. Similarly, we have, we have some chemo taxes, yeah, then uh, thermo taxes, temperature gradient, so chemicals. In yeah, in chemo taxes, uh, it is the movement towards the chemicals. Chemicals here means uh, nutrients. And similarly, thermo taxes, that is the uh, movement towards the temperature, temperature gradient, gradient as seen by small nematodes and uh, slime molds. Then we have thigmo taxes, which is due to physical contact. Elka eppudu nadi roomlo nundi thirugadu. Adi godal ponti, leda nilalo padda gani, nilalo goda ponti thirugadam. I think this is because of thigmo taxes, a physical contact. Then gravit taxes, geo taxes, bahumiya karshana. It is king crab, Rajapita yoka dimbakalu, uh, lithos uh, equispines and uh, a king crab yoka dimbakalu, if we boom local ki path poe pratam just a vinilal lo. Hmm. Then and we have rio taxes, hmm. uh, galvano taxes, rio taxes, phono taxes. So in galvano taxes means it is the movement uh, in response to the stimuli in the form of electric field that is exhibited by cells in the culture. Rhino taxes means it is a movement towards the uh, current of fluid. It, it is observed uh, in case of Fish. fishes. Similarly, phono, phono, phono sound, means sound. sound. Dogs. Uh, dogs or yeah. any other animal. Similarly, animotaxis means it is a movement uh, in response to wind. a current of wind, mm. which is uh, exemplified by insects. insects. Similarly, uh, movement uh, in response to moisture, we call it as hydrotaxis, as seen in case of wire, the wire worms or larvae. Okay. Then in clinotaxis, it occurs in animals with receptor cells which are located all over the body, but there are no paired receptor organs. Jatalga onde gnana angalu lena patki, ee clinotaxis in indu kante shariram paina mutham ee oka gnana kanalu kaligi unta ega batti, ee arakamena clinotaxis pravartana chupta. Ee clinotaxis lo movement ane di straight line ga unta unta ane manam indu lo gurthi nchko wale. Uh, example of say fl uh, blow fly, fly and uh, butterfly uh, larvae. larvae. Uh, the second type is uh, uh, tropotaxis that is it will uh, take the signals uh, simultaneously from the paid receptors unlike the earlier clinotaxis. Here uh, the movement is sideways either left side or right side. So, in short tropotaxis simply means turned movement. So, you can rem remember T for T uh, example is grayling butterfly and uh, fish slouse. Fish slouse. Huh. Then we have telotaxis where there are paid receptors and the movement along occurs along the direction where the intensity of the stimulus is stronger. Mm. So they balance the stimuli from the sun and the flowers, but wherever the intensity is high, they tend to reside on those places. For example, the hermit crab. Mm. And uh, the next type of uh, taxis behavior is called menotaxis. In short, we can say it is a uh, angular orientation. That means the animal, it maintains a fixed angle or a constant angle to the stimulus. Example of this behavior is silkworm moth flies. Uh, they uh, move at a, an angle perpendicular to the direction, direction of, of the, the wind, wind and uh, uh, they pick up the center trail of their, mate, uh, of their mate of their mate and uh, Im immediately they turn upwind and uh, find the chemical gradient of the trail. Then we have uh, another magnetotaxis. This is uh, in uh, relation to the magnetic cues. As is uh, aquaspidulum is um, a bacteria um, which is capable of utilizing the magnetic field of the earth to determine the position. Mm, yeah. And uh, uh, the last type of uh, this taxis is called nemotaxis. In short, it is nothing but a memory movement. So, this movement uh, in this uh, behavior, the animal remembers uh, the movement uh, by keeping certain landmarks. Yeah. Konda Gurthula like, Sahayanto, uh, Adi Chalanani, Pradar Shishthi. Pakshla Yuka Valasa, Chepala Yuka Valasa, Manavul Guda. Manu Mikadki Radaanki Guda, In Orbit Maal Gurthu Vetko Ala, Leda Gudurgam Cheru Gurthu Vetko Ala, Root. Okay. Okay. Now, let us rush uh, to the reflexes. next type called reflex. Reflexes are nothing but uh, simple inborn automatic response of a body part to stimulus. So, it is a quick response where the animals uh, get protected from the harm. And uh, uh, some examples of reflexes uh, are narrowing of the pupil of eye on seeing a bright light. Mm. Similarly, 
మనము ఏదైనా ఒక వేడి వస్తువుని ముట్టుకున్నప్పుడు అది వెంటనే చేయి వెనక్కి వెళ్ళిపోతుంది సో ఆ విధమైనటువంటి ప్రవర్తన అది రిఫ్లెక్స్ యాక్షన్ గా చెప్పుకోవచ్చు అదేవిధంగా మనకు ఇంకో రెండు రకాల రిఫ్లెక్సెస్ ఉన్నాయి వాటిని సెరిబ్రల్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ అని అలాగే స్పైనల్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ అని అంటాం దేని ఆధారంగా అంటే నర్వ్ సెంటర్ కంట్రోలింగ్ నర్వ్ సెంటర్ మెదడైతే దాన్ని సెరిబ్రల్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ అంటాం అదే స్పైనల్ కార్డ్ అయినట్టయితే దాన్ని స్పైనల్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ అంటాం అదేవిధంగా మోనోసినాప్టిక్ అండ్ పాలిసినాప్టిక్ రిఫ్లెక్సెస్ ఇది ఏ ఆధారంగా వీటిని ఇలా డివైడ్ చేసాము అంటే ఎన్ని సినాప్సెస్ ఉంటాయో దాన్ని బట్టి ఉదాహరణకి పాలిసినాప్టిక్ రిఫ్లెక్సెస్ లో ఎక్కువ ఉంటాయి మూడు కంటే ఎక్కువ సినాప్సెస్ ఉంటే దాన్ని పాలిసినాప్టిక్ రిఫ్లెక్సెస్ అంటాము అంతకంటే తక్కువ ఉన్న దాన్ని మోనోసినాప్టిక్ అంటాం సో పాలిసినాప్టిక్ రిఫ్లెక్సెస్ కి ఎగ్జాంపుల్ గా మసల్ రిఫ్లెక్సెస్ ని మనం చెప్పుకోవచ్చు if the level of stimulus is changing it leads to phasic mm. if the level of stimulus is constant or the same mm. it leads to tonic mm. reflex yeah. and uh, uh, phasic reflex it represents a burst of muscle activity which is called as twitchy movement yeah. whereas tonic muscle reflex ha huh, to tonic reflex shows uh, sustained muscle contraction in other words smooth movement yeah like sitting for continuously for hours together yeah maintaining the posture, posture. is an example for yeah. tonic reflex similarly the phasic reflexes they are fast whereas tonic reflexes are slow, slow. so uh, phasic reflexes are also known as monosynaptic reflexes whereas tonic reflexes are called as polysynaptic, polysynaptic reflexes and the last type of reflexes that is unconditioned and conditioned reflexes so in unconditioned reflex the uh, <coughs> uh, reflexes they are not familiar whereas in condition reflex the uh, mm -hmm. uh, stimulus is uh, 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 experienced by learning so tropism is again another mechanism which is generally shown by plants mm -hmm. and lower animals mm -hmm. where there is only uh, orientation of the body part to a particular stimulus mm -hmm. but there is no complete movement of that particular animal mm -hmm. or plant basically mm -hmm. all plants are mm -hmm. static mm -hmm. then we have the next one we have orthopedic plagiotropic diatropic yeah. the movement is towards the stimulus to a oblique in the direction of the stimulus or at right angles to the stimulus yeah. then we have phototrophic uh, response to light chemotropic response to chemicals hmm. thigmotropic response to mechanical stimulus gravitropism response to gravity hmm. then we have galvanotropism response to electric current hydrotropism water trametotropism response to the wound okay these are all the different types of tropisms hmm. which are basically exhibited by lower animals and plants so this we have in a nutshell hmm. we have given about the different kinds of behavioral patterns which are exhibited at the first two levels of behaviors yeah. so, so in the tropism in hmm. innate intrinsic acquired, acquired and motivational motivational taxis hmm. tropisms and reflexes reflexes hmm. these were the aspects which were covered today so sir shall we see some questions yeah the so questions from, that uh, are liable to come in the examinations yeah so, so these are the various questions innate behavior hmm. imprinting tropotaxis reflex arc tropism clinokinesis monosynaptic reflex polysynaptic reflex tonic reflex phasic reflex telotaxis minotaxis yeah, these are for short questions then long questions we can have what are taxis right about taxis suitable examples anuchalanalu anaga emiti so udaharanaga vivarinchandi what is reflex arc discuss the various reflex with suitable example hmm. and uh, you have you can expect some more questions like what is behavior hmm. explain uh, uh, the, the different types, of, types behavior. of behavior and the advantage of be as i told earlier advantage Case of behavior, of behavior is, is survival value yeah, and also for carrying out successful reproduction. reproduction yeah so what are the differences between innate, innate and uh, acquired be, uh, acquired behaviors or learned behaviors swabhavika mariyu arjita pravartanallo మదర్ బర్డ్ సో దేర్ ది మదర్ బర్డ్ ఈస్ ట్రైంగ్ టు సప్లై ద ఫుడ్ టు దాట్ బర్డ్ విచ్ ఈస్ షోయింగ్ ఓపెన్ మౌత్ వెర్ ఎస్ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ ఆన్ ది లెఫ్ట్ సైడ్ దీస్ బర్డ్స్ ఆర్ నాట్ రిసెప్టివ్ ఫర్ ద ఫుడ్ సో విత్ దిస్ we conclude our presentation thank you very much for this opportunity we thank the commissioner college of education